some years ago, as I was about to go on the air with a backstory about the formative days of Slobodan Milosevic in Serbia, my producer came up to me and said that an intern had taken it upon herself to fact check the story and had discovered a discrepancy. Well, rather than get angry five minutes before the broadcast, I said, well, you know, bring her here. I want to meet her right now. Well, Ernie took off, and a moment later, he came back. And following him was this 22-year-old Georgetown graduate. It was the intern. Her hair was done up in a greasy ponytail. She stepped on stage into the light that's supposed to wrap my face, okay? Uh, she stuck out her hand, and in shock, I shook it. Uh, she gave me this knowing grin. And do you remember what she said to me? Of course I remember. I said, we've never met, but my name is Sarah Brown, and you're going to want to hear what I have to tell you next. You'll be blindfolded and the drive will be long. You'll have exactly 20 minutes of our hour, and if all goes as planned, you'll be back in Baghdad in roughly 13 hours. If all goes as planned. If all goes as planned. Thank you. Hmm. Rain in the desert. Must be a lucky day. Have fun. missed it. Your bodies have moved on. Taking with them their all you can relate buffet, huh? Some of the Yazidi women and children, they fled up the mountain on foot and pray for mercy from the peacock god. That was interesting. <sighs> Did you know that since Assyrian times, their fate forbids them to write? Do you even know what fate they were originally? I'll give you a hint. <sighs> they weren't Shiite. Nestorian Christians. And if you thought that they were Zoroastrianists, you'd be wrong as well. They were Satanists. The Islamic devil worshiper. And in good old oral tradition, so the story goes. In Assyrian times, at the top of Mount Sanja stood the Temple of Malek. Now, even in this cosmogonic infatuated world we live in today, Malek would be considered the devil. But back then, Malik translated meant simply king. Now, one like good. Malik did not want your donations on a Sunday. And really, unlike God, 
Malik could not give a fuck about your prayers. No. What Malik wanted from the Yazidis was their fear. And to the Yazidis, as far as God goes, God was anyone or anything that could deliver them from Malik. Now doesn't that sound more real to life than all the other bullshit we hear today, huh? <laughs> you don't have to do this. I, I, I have my own money. I, 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 I can take you to... Respectfully, Assad. And I do respect you. You're a good pro. But why would you still be in this piston sandbox asshole into the world if you'd any amount of money that gave a shit about, huh? <laughs> Tens of thousands of dollars! Assad! Hey! Sterling! Hey, <laughs> no, 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 Assad. You don't understand. I don't give a shit about this pitiful sum of money. No. Far more valuable to me is seeing what happens to people who try to rip off my money drop. <laughs> and to their families. No, Assad. Yes, yes, Assad. If you needed cash, you should have stolen from the Americans or the Germans and lied about it like the Russians. <laughs> it's not your fault. You did not know the Yazidi secret. Hey, neither did I, because it's never been written anywhere. Has to be whispered to you. It's far better for you to see it than to experience. Shall I whisper it? Thanks. Asad, smile. You're on camera. It's a pray. Pray that it's like a sesame. <laughs> I want to ask you about uh, about the secular component of the Islamic State. Mm -hmm. The movement began with a few private anonymous investors who funded early operations. But now, as the caliphate spans thousands of miles, it controls banks, oil fields, mining facilities. With these millions of dollars. It's not millions. It's billions. Well, with it, you're able to employ... Say it. With these billions of dollars, you're able to employ members of the global mercenary community. When we use them, you call them mercenaries. When America uses them, they're called security contractors. That's a good point. Um, with these billions of dollars, you're able to better train Islamic State fighters, assassinate tribal leaders, 
You can hire an expansive team of counterintelligence experts to help protect yourself. The wake of the Caliphate's expansion has shown a clear strategic emphasis on capturing these resources and monetary gain. Is Allah concerned with wealth? Why don't you ask the Pope how God likes living in his home in the Vatican? Allah is not a Marxist. Allah is not a capitalist. God is simply Allah. And his philosophy is unambiguous. So you might say that we are in revolt against any philosophy that places itself above the word of Allah. But that doesn't pay the rent. <laughs> well, how would you describe the difference between you and Osama bin Laden? I am not at the bottom of the ocean. Ideologically. Al-Qaeda was willing to wait a century to create the caliphate and Islamic State. Where they seek the reverent and the wealthy, we seek the bold and disaffected. But we are willing to accept the fearful just the same. That is how we, few, became many. You want to know what Osama bin Laden really concerned himself with you. He was concerned with spectacular acts of reprisal, seeking to cull the support of the media. The more the act had size, the greater the media attention, and the more people who would watch, the more the world feared. The more the world feared, the more who watched. And yet one might say the more attention bin Laden got the more he became a target. Assad, this fear is starting the village. You are also the Yazidi king. The closest thing to his experience and you can help around these parts. Can you feel it, Assad? Ah, it's beautiful. I know you can keep the secret. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah God, is there anything that can save you, huh? Your God today, Assad, is in that duffel bag. And to save your prayers, she'll fucking love you. Guy. I repeat, Polar Sky is confirmed at KIA. Alright. <laughs> I'm afraid our time together is up. On behalf of GBN, I'd like to thank you for granting me this exclusive interview and for respecting the safety of foreign journalists in conflict areas. It's the whole world is a conflict area, Sarah. What do you think it will take for people to realize that? Assalamu alaikum. Be covering. We make a piece of shit. I didn't see him. You're gonna be all right. 
He will wake up again if it's not here in the jungle. Ah! So calm down. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I want to wake up. He has to take it out. He has to take it out. No. 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 Okay, we're going to get this out. Hey! We're going to get this No, 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 no. no. Do something. Come on. Okay. What? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, Where's your Just stuff? Here. Hold this. Hold this on his face right here. Hold this on his face right there. Okay. You pump. You pump right there. Okay? Come on. Okay. Where's, where's your defibrillator? I don't have anything else. I don't have a defibrillator. Just keep pumping. <clears throat> Ahmad is dead. Her fucking doctor is a junkie. He's got fucking track marks all over his arms. Looks like another one of our chat room studs fucks up. Someone go check on her. There was nothing else I could do. I know, I know. Um, Masawi, uh, are you familiar with the uh, trans music? You know, trans pop? What? You know, like. Do, 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 do. Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh. Do, 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 do. demands or are you just gonna kill me we have demands and we're just gonna kill you please let rj go he has a family i'm enough for the camera he's of no use to you i don't see how letting him go would be of any use to us he's got a little girl she's two your name? My name is Jalil. Jalil, may I make a request? It doesn't matter what you do. Hmm? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He was a fucking junkie. You can't trust junkies. I'm in charge here. 
You don't do shit like this. Where are the track marks? Right there, they're just covered in blood. Sure. Right, fuck me. Wait, wait a minute. I don't see any track marks. I, I, I saw track marks. Did you see him? Uh, he wasn't looking, but uh, I don't know why we couldn't. Uh, he's dead now. It is what it is. Who gave her the chat? You gave her the chat, right? So she wanted something to play in life. Think before you do something stupid like this. Why don't you uh, give her a cell phone back? Are into flames. However, the big story of. Developing since the break, a group of masked men armed with automatic rifles stormed the shootout and kidnapping, apparently involving GBN correspondent and well known conservative political commentator Sarah Brown. Sarah Brown. Sarah Brown. GBN correspondent Sarah Brown. Recently, for her tireless efforts working with the World Refugee Children's Fund, the organization had raised 230. Brown has been in the spotlight recently because of her exclusive and seemingly impossible interview with Islamic State Commander Ra'ar al-Yassim a few months ago. Put this on. Now. I said now! Fucking move it! لحظة لحظة جاهز؟ أمريكا أصبحت أمة تحب المشاهدة ولهذا سوف نعطيهم شيئا ليشاهدونه في خلال هذه الاستقلال والاحتفال في أربعة تموز سارة براون وآر جي ساك سوف نعدمهم ونقطع رأسهم في خلال بث مباشر على الانترنت وعندما تكونون في آخر هذا الأسبوع The price is death No one is truly safe Not anymore So enjoy your fireworks You know, I used to have a small house outside of Zeon and Baghdad. It was me, my mother, and Samir. Do you remember? Yeah. 
and his mom. What happened to her again? She died in childbirth. Sure, we all heard it's a dam, but my family was safe. My son was going to school. So we became at peace with being powerless. Then you invaded. <laughs> Again. And Saddam got on the TV and radio and said we were going to win. Again. My mother, who was dying, came to me and said it was time for us to act now, no matter what the Americans did. It was time for Iraq to answer the call of justice and remove Saddam. So I listened. Four months later, I was working with the Delta Force as a translator, and we pulled Saddam out of that fucking rat hole where he was hiding. The time when I helped you with Saddam, that week, my son's school was fucking blown up. <laughs> I told my son that there'll be schools in America that he can go to. But then, nothing. We got you forgot the part where you disobeyed the team commander and you beat the shit out of Saddam. It took a makeup team over an hour to get him ready for the arraignment. It was fucking Saddam. They should have fucking hung him right there. Yeah, you also forgot the part where you're trying to smuggle $80,000 in bearer bonds to get your turkey coming back. Those are my bullshit. Yeah. They were traced back to a bank in Tikrit. A bank that was owned by Saddam's family. That was family. a safety deposit box my mother had before she died. She was from Tikrit. Your mom is Jordanian. <laughs> so. Agree to fucking disagree, okay? So what now? Am I to pose as a lone wolf recruiter and infiltrate some dormant sleeper cell? Use some of my rare credibility once again? That shit works until it fucking doesn't. We got this bill we need Congress to pass to help the vice president outsource federal law enforcement jobs to a private company. So we, uh, we need you to shoot up a junior high school in North Hollywood. No mass casualties. Maybe no more than five, six kids. Yeah. Just fucking with you. CIA doesn't really do that kind of shit. Fuck no, unless you believe nine out of ten old black guys that will tell you differently. <laughs> shit, really? Fuck you guys. Man. So what is it? Exactly what you said. Word for word. Literally. Get in. Where is Ahmed? We were supposed to be with you. I need his authorized confirmation. But you fool, but I'm not telling me. Cool. Not without his confirmation. I won't ask you again. Are you fucking crazy? I want his confirmation now. Or we all die. Your reputation precedes you, Assad. I am Ahmed. And you are Assad Nazir, the Pathis, who Rar still trusts. Please, come in the back. I tried to make it Sunday, but I got so damn depressed. Better set my sights on Monday, and I got myself undressed. I ain't ready. For the altar, but I do agree there's times when a woman sure can be a friend of mine. Well, I keep on thinking about you, Sister Golden Hair Surprise, and I just can't live without you. Can't you see it in my eyes? I've been born for. I've been too, too hard to find But it doesn't mean you ain't been on my mind 
trying to fake it. I don't mind saying I just can't make it. This just in, according to Los Angeles fire officials, it has now been confirmed that all of these fires are the work of one single arsonist. And we're basing this, of course, off of reports on the type of incendiary and burn patterns found at the scene. 271 days, we do know it has been since we've had any rainfall in Southern California. And these fires can't seem to come at a worse time. Breaking news from the United States. UCLA Medical Center has let us know that Alex Shamoff, the security officer injured in the shootout in Los Angeles, has passed away from the injuries he sustained. We are now going live to Los Angeles. What's going on? What are you looking at? I bet your whole fucking white American cunt life that nobody has done anything to you but kiss your ass, give you nice clothes, and tell you how fucking white and amazing you are, and make you feel like you're somebody special. Why didn't Briar just kill me then? Why now? I just waited until his interview was shown all over the fucking world. Don't feel so important. You're just a primetime news whore who sucked Jew dicks to be on TV. What's so terrifying about dying in Iraq? It happens every day. It's terrifying to Americans when it happens on your doorstep, on the land of the free and disbelievers. There are no more borders in the world, not even in the caliphates. Everywhere. I am just a primetime news whore. Do you think when you're facing the blade, you lose that sassy mouth that's always interrupting men on GBN while you're screeching and talking all over them? This is Rar, operating in Iraq in 2006. The man on his right is the founder of the Islamic State, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. Back then, IS was just a division of al-Qaeda. Rar was a Sunni cleric in Mosul who started his own 180-man brigade during the insurgency. This is a more recent photograph of Rar, one of the first of him not wearing any glasses. Supposedly, he underwent laser corrective surgery about a year before I interviewed him. It's actually not uncommon for some of these higher-up guys to have had the same doctors their whole lives. So, uh, sounds more like a rich kid thing than a terrorist thing, if you ask me. But. What did your family think about the risk you took? I mean, two French journalists were beheaded, what was it, just two weeks ago? What made you think they keep their word about your safety? I don't have any family. I was adopted, and my parents were older. That's the one bonehead question I'm going to allow myself. 
Look, it sounds like you're asking me if I have a death wish. Am I correct? I mean, you said it. The last time I had a death wish, I was in this school taking this course, and we had to read 400 pages of Graham Greene a weekend. <laughs> Uh, these uh, Kurdish tribal leaders. Who was the man you just skipped over? That was Joshua Halil. I say was because supposedly Joshua Halil, an Israeli officer in the Shayatet 13, which is their Navy SEAL equivalent, supposedly he died in a, in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan in 2010. Who is he? He was the world's most proficient counterinsurgent turned private contractor. He was known by Hamas as Adam, or the darkness. And it's rumored that he had risen to number two on the CIA's most wanted list. Last question is from Michael, a second year German exchange student from the University of Hamburg. Um, as a journalism student, I have noticed that your style of coverage is becoming more and more fear-mongering. Can't you tell the difference between the godless ideals of ISIS and true Allah-fearing Muslims? Gute Frage. Ich würde aber erst gerne meine eigene Frage stellen. Wie könnte man die Auswirkungen der syrischen Muslime in der Flüchtlingskrise auf den Straßen von München und Hamburg beschreiben? 92% Muslime 6% Christen und 2% andere. Nicht nur Diebstahl, sondern auch Gewaltverbrechen. Und die Sozialdienste sind völlig überfordert. Eine religiöse Gruppe und ein paar verpisste Deutsche. Wenn du mich fragst, dann klingt es nicht nach einer guten Kombination. Ein Land bekommt immer den Führer, den es will. Also was passiert, wenn Deutschland oder in diesem Falle Amerika entscheidet, dass sie die Nase voll hat? Dann sagt mir, nicht nur für die USA, sondern im Allgemeinen für die ganze Welt. Klingt das nicht so, als wenn man Angst haben müsste? Do you also think I got Ahmed killed? I think it was his time to go. Even leaders make mistakes. I think Allah is tasting my resolve. Let me tell you something. As some might have you believe, Allah does not only respect killers. I'm not an idiot. I know you're not believers. And so? So? You're mercenaries? We kill for money. And you, kill in the name of God. What's the difference? People still die. So who's Joshua Halil? Why? Well, I heard Bashir and Shababi speak. Why Sarah's cell? He was death. He is the man who killed my son, Samir. He worked for R, doing things I would never do. But I killed him. Hmm? What are these for? For our extraction plan. <clears throat> Just in case we got the cops on our ass. Two men, Diran Azari and Hassan Al-Najari, went AWOL last week. 
their Iraqi police trainees the way here in the U.S. on a joint training operation with Army Rangers. Washington has been trying to bridge these relations between the new Iraqi government and the U.S. by doing this kind of shit. Big fucking mistake. These two guys just walked up the base ladder. I recognize either one of them. Maybe they're at the safe house, but I haven't been there yet. They're still keeping you in the dark. Even the Aurora, personally, put you in the cell. That's right. Shortly after we got a hold of Joshua, we started to receive cyber intel. From a very motivated source, it was telling us that Ra was reaching out, trying to find him. That's why we chose that cell for you to cut into. I mean, that's what Ra wanted. He trusts you. How can you still don't know their objective? I mean, it could be a dirty bomb, could be a mass shooting, you know, it could be a fucking catered luncheon at the 21 Club for all we know. See you in 24 hours. So what the fuck were you doing in there? Spying on me? You guys heard you can come in? Well, I didn't say we should do that. Raul well, is not here right now. Hey! You can't shoot straight. You can't hear well. What the fuck can you do? Hold the fucking camera? It's calm down. Shit happens. <laughs> yeah, well, if I was on a six, it wouldn't have. Why did Raul even send you, man? You're not devout. You're a fucking mercenary with no country, no faith, no family. <laughs> You're right. And also, don't forget, no more patience either. We're good? You fucked up. Ibn Ahmar. That's what she said when she mapped up to me. That's why I choked her. Long ago, I was in love with a girl, Halima Miawi. Her father Rashid hated me. He used to call me that. Halima had epilepsy. One day when she was driving, she had an attack and drove into an American checkpoint. They killed her, of course, thinking she was a bomber. Rashid came to my home and said it was my fault. He said if I was with her, that wouldn't have happened. He had a bomb. He wanted me to adventure death. I refused. I was scared. That evening, he went to the checkpoint himself with the bomb. It was just a coincidence. Ebn Himar. She pronounced it exactly like he did. Asad, have you ever known anyone that act the way she act? I mean, she's painting a fucking picture right now. And how did she know about Joshua Halil? She's an international news correspondent. <laughs> That's bullshit, and you know it. Joshua was blacked out, blacker than black. No civilian could know shit about him, no matter how well connected. Maybe no civilian. What does that mean? That means she was a spook. A fucking CIA cunt. She's not CIA. There are no fucking black helicopters. She just said the name. I say we do the cameraman now. Initiate the extraction plan. And we'll do her just right before we go. No. No one is going to break the plan. Because a bitch has us all stir crazy. Rar gave the order and we execute them. Right? He wanted her, and no one is going to change the plan until I say so. My phone? Whose watch is it? Mine. I'm going.
breaking news from our top commanders of new forces in the insurgency of new Iraq. The spokesman there said it took several days to confirm through DNA testing, but we have learned that Ra'ar al Yassim's body was in fact one of the bodies found inside the bunker. Again, the Pentagon is confirming at this hour Ra'ar al Yassim is deceased and has been for almost four months now. And the details of his death and the whereabouts of the secret bunker where this body was found have yet to be revealed. Of course, keep it tuned right here. We will follow this story day and night to bring you more. As soon as Ahmad briefs you on your cell's objective, you're to contact us immediately. When's your next pickup? Tomorrow night. Two way with us after. Remember, keep yourself on pod on at all times. We're running this thing race so we can track you. Okay. Sir, get in. I thought we were meeting until tonight. Sir, rent on all your personal items. Yellow. mission is now underway. Finish? Take him inside. Take his boots off. Let's go. <laughs> Say, bro, that house of yours is in Puerto Rico, right? Shit, man. <laughs> Ten houses already burned down. That's right. Your whole fucking city is burning. My money is on something having to do with this. Is that what your money is? Tell me something about your money. Is that what your daughter's 
kill your son because you ripped off his money? Huh? And, and I bet you that you know Halil would come after you if you stole it, right? Except in the process, your son, what was his name? Samir, he gets cut up, right? But then I put two and two together. Joshua, our right-hand man, knows he's working both sides. You have a pleasure, my son, again. I will do to you what I did to Joshua. Go on, do it. You got no choice. Do it. I thought you were never going to come speak to me. It's hard for a girl to make the first move, Major Nazir. Were you just fucking him to get intel on the green zone? Or did you actually care about him? You're just trying to find a justification for killing me. Anybody who can love that sadistic fuck cannot be different herself. I don't know you very well, Assad. But I know you well enough to know that you're a man looking for faith ever since Samir's murder. How do you know about that? Deep down, you wonder if you're going to heaven or hell. I just wonder how a man who's heard the secret can possibly still wonder. Heard what secret?
You have less than a day left. I do know that. Sarah. Please make sure the world sees my painting. I will, Sarah. I promise. Stop it. Stop fucking sharpening that knife. I'm glad you're back. You ran off earlier. RJ just got caught in the middle of this ring. He had no idea who you really are. Well, he's in good company then, Asad. It could matter to you. You are a spook. A scared CIA pawn in over her head. <laughs> I know you are, Assad, but what am I? <laughs> I know. There's no excuse to hit you well at a time like this. It's just you did walk right into. you tell me who you really are? Ladies first. Why don't you tell me what it was like when you cut my dear Joshua's head off? Did he scream? Did his throat gurgle? Did he use duct tape or zip tie? to keep him from flailing around. Oh, that's right. You didn't need to. Because he was already dead. No. I killed him. I cut the fucker's head off. Look what he did to my son. No. He wasn't alive when you cut his head off. Not like Samir was. So you didn't really avenge his death, did you? Just please, please. When you put RJ and I in front of the camera, please kill me first. <laughs> Need a drink right about now. I have an idea. Why don't we watch the video? You know, the one where you cut Joshua's head off after he died. 
It's on the same tape as some years, isn't it? I bet you somebody has it around here. I would actually really like to see it again. Where did you see it? See, that's not fair, Asad. Because you haven't answered any of my questions yet. I saw it on Rar's laptop. What are you doing here? It's an honor to meet you, Hassad. I was just asking the rest of your team the same question. What are you talking about? It means she wasn't even our fucking mission, Hassad. How is that possible? We're working on direct orders from Rar. Did you know Rar is dead? He never switched hideouts. The American intel found them in his bunker, along with the others. Dead. It's all over the news. It has been for a while. Except they aren't releasing the circumstances of his death. Oh, fuck me. Your mission was to facilitate and evacuate my arson team. Who do you think set up all these fires? We knew you guys were here. We just never checked in. We were instructed to have zero contact. Because our phones and email may be trapped. <laughs> fucking bullshit! You're a fucking liar! Joshua is dead and now are? But not before he assigns you to this mission. He was fucking dead. How could he? Where you going, Chatham boy? How did they die? Rar. The rest. Somebody butchered them. She's on every news website and networks on the planet. She's fucking number one trending on Twitter. I don't know about you guys, but this is all making sense to me. Butchered. Like Joshua Halil. Not like Halil. Worse. He was dismembered, disemboweled. The Americans found their bodies. What was left of them? They've been rotting down there for a while. Listen to me. There is something very wrong, but I had nothing to do with it. If Ahmed was not getting his orders from him, then who? Was it you, Hassan? Yuzia? Before I left for Fort Henry, I spoke with Rahad. And he said you were the most skilled killer he had ever met. But that you are now a disbeliever and he didn't know. He could still trust you. Did he say anything else? He did. What was it? I'm forgetting. Oh. He said that if there were anything to happen to him, it was because of you. And that we should kill your CIA. Yes.
When we look at it, what do you see? Nothing. When you look at me, what do you see? I see a foreign sun who's filled with hate and fear. And that gets me. I'm about to show you the real face of terror. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And as it was once, it will be again. In the name of the Almighty Allah. Know that when our children die in the name of Jihad, they go serenely and quietly into the loving arms of Allah. When your children die, they sound like this. Where did she go? Give me the fucking key! Where did she go? I don't know where she is!
the devil run from bullets? There is no devil, Hassan. There is no God, either. There is only fear. Fear is the only motive. But you are a sheep. Listen, believe me, everything you hear. أرجوك طلعني من هون بس بدي اروح على المدرسة وكن فرحان معك بأمريكا أرجوك بابا أرجوك بدي إياك تحبني مثل ما كنت تحب الله It was never a lie in my heart It has always been you, Samir I knew your prophets. I knew your prophets. <laughs> and they all tasted as good as raw. But none of them had any answers for me. Do you, Asad? I know you are. But what am I? <laughs> It's been two weeks since your harrowing escape from your terrorist captors, barely making it out of the building alive before the building itself collapsed in flames behind you. Your story has touched the hearts and minds of most Americans. In fact, Congress just voted to fund an emergency measure set forth by the president to begin background registration and procedures in place 
to process every Muslim in America and to close the borders to all non-Americans. Just made it out of the warehouse. You're waiting for the police. What were you thinking? I was thinking, this is a sign. This is the sign you've been waiting for, Sarah. This is a sign from God. God has let you live so that you can go on to do more. So that I can tell my story to you, to America, to the world. Because knowledge is power. And the good people here and abroad deserve to know the truth. I'm not going to lie, Steve. We have every reason to be fearful. Tried to make it Sunday, but I got so damn depressed. Better set my sights on Monday, and I got myself undressed. I ain't ready for the altar, but I do agree there's times when a woman sure can be a friend of mine. Trying to fake it, I don't mind saying, I just can't make it. 